welcome to the Burger Bonanza. You know, lads, remember when we said that this season was going to be an all-islander? We meant it. This time we're going to Derry. Big time. We're going to serious lengths of breadth to be the best burgers about. And despite the amount of time that it took to get there, we didn't care. We just wanted to get up there and get it into us. Nestled beside the river foil is the poetically named Pike and Palms. We had a go for some Wagyu, y'all. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Maybe you could tell us a little bit about Pike and Palms, how the whole business came about and how you got to where you are now. We started Pike and Palms back in 2013. Um, I was a chef by trade anyway. I've worked in kitchens all my life basically since I've been about 16. I was running a restaurant in the waterside there. I took a wee trip to Tom Aiken's restaurant in Chelsea. I did a wee stage there about three, just over three years ago. I was looking to push the whole restaurant thing, but see when I got to London, all I could see was all these wee street food vans and I get well, like a wee hour in between sort of our day's work. We get a wee hour out in the afternoon, I go out and try a wee different sort of street food van and I just sort of took it from there, like, you know. As soon as I got back home, I looked at my wife and says, I am getting out of the restaurant trade, I'm going to buy a van. And she looked at me and went, you're absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> and I kind of just went from there, like, you know. Um, Pike's my second name. I took a wee twist, Pike and Palms, so it's like fish and potatoes kind of idea. And we play by that, so that's where the name come from. What, in your opinion, makes a quality, quality burger? The key behind a good burger is don't do much with it. Let the meat stand for itself, incorporate a couple of sort of flavors, and in a sense, a nice couple of sauces, a couple of nice wee leaves, maybe. Always a nice wee pickle in around there, and that's all you need, I think, and a good cheese, maybe. Mm. So I've tried different cheeses. I've tried really expensive cheese down to this, and I've just come, I think, to me, just a normal burger cheese is the business thing. How did you come to go, this is the burger that we want? It's, it's funny, because the guy who I get the beef off, he kind of approached me. Um, he was all, listen, I've started this, this idea of Wagyu cows about three years ago. We're now in production. It's our first year. Just so happens, it was just time as I started, he approached me and they had an animal sort of ready. He says, come out and try it and see what you think. He took me out, we went around the fields, he showed me the animals, and they're, the most ugliest looking cows you'll ever see in your life, man. I'm telling you, you know, there's like far I hear farmers chatting about big hinds and they need to be this and they need to be that. These things just look like a just sort of disheveled animal. Tasty fuckers though. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you. I've worked with beef for, for years and I have to say, there's no doubt about it. It's the best beef I've worked with ever. So we use the fore quarter and we use a bit of the hind quarter and we take, obviously we take a bit of the belly and stuff and a lot of the fat we get incorporated back into it. So we work on about an 80% meat to about 20% fat ratio. So that way you get this lovely crumbly burger. We get a good seal on it and then all the fat stays inside and sort of melts in around it. And it's, that's where the key is. Yeah, so I, I use these uh, leaves that literally, you know, I give Michael a call. He, I tell him what I want and it comes down to me about three hours later and they're literally pulled out of the ground. You know what I mean? Um, Amazing. This time of year, I can't get the tomatoes. I normally would sort of come the end of July, August. They have loads of tomatoes up there. Heritage, big heritage tomatoes, full of flavor. Mm. You know, you could just eat them like fruit. Mm. They're amazing, man. So we get a wee slice of that in there. Wee purple leaves, purple frills, bring a wee mustardy kind of background flavor to it, a wee bit of heat. And then I would use white oaks onions and stuff. We would just slice them down. I would pickle them and some Worcester sauce and spices, some uh, fresh herbs and stuff from the up white oaks as well. And I would just use a Stand of ketchup, and we make our own wee mayonnaise, and I put together a wee bit of Dijon mustard and a wee bit of honey and stuff. Amazing, and that's it, man. <laughs> Sounds Savage. absolutely And a wee bit of cheese, obviously, to stay over the top. Savage, brilliant, yeah. excellent. Well, I can't wait for you. Let's get <laughs> brilliant. Thanks for coming. Come on, all right, come on. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh man, that is unbelievable. You can taste the pickle in there. You can even taste I'm those leaves, that like proper, like fresh leaves, so that they taste like leaves, not like water. Like, you know, yeah. you've got the, the, the fat rendered down into the beef, keeping it juicy, but got that kind of like irony, lovely, proper, beefy taste. I'm like, I've never had Wagyu beef before, and <laughs> I'll tell you, I'd have it again. Yeah, but there's also a lot of sweetness coming off the dressing as well. It's just so tasty. It's mm. just, it's so, man, there's so much going on here. It's ridiculous. I mean, this is ideal, man. If you're ever going to Derry, walking down the banks of the foil, try this out. It actually makes me want to be a river dancer. Truly. Really. 
it is the perfect location for what could be described as a perfect burger. It is absolutely delicious. And when you've got a day like today when the sun is shining, mm. there's nothing better you can be doing. Well, there you have it, lads. If you ever find yourself up in Derry, be sure to check out Pike and Palms. Some people call it Derry. Some people call it London Derry. We, we just, just call, call it delicious. delicious.